So that's just my little disclaimer that I'm placing there so that it helps us better understand the text of where we're reading. But in 2 Kings chapter number 4, verse number 8, 2 Kings chapter number 8, I'm going to start reading in verse number 4. The Bible says, And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray you, all the things that Elisha has done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son, had uh, uh, son he had restored to life uh, cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My Lord, O King, this is the woman that her son, who, uh, th that is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And, and when the king asked the woman, she told him, So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers 
and all the fruits of her field since the day that she left the land, even until now. We know that she, a uh, 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 famine happened. The, 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 the woman whose son was raised to life left her home. She came back her home, her land, things was taken from her. And she cried out. She wanted it to be restored. Who was this woman? Well, we don't know her name, but we do know this, that she was a wealthy woman. We do know that she was married. We do know that she made a way for Elisha, the prophet. We made uh, She made a room on her house for him and uh, his servant, Gehazi. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And now she comes back in her house and her land and the fruits of her land are gone. And so the only one who can justify to say that this is the woman is the servant of Elisha, whose name is Gehazi. Now all these details this morning we're going to bring together when we get to the close of our message. But I, I want us to look at Gehazi. Uh, he, you see him, and uh, if you would, uh, how about Daniel, why don't you come up here for a minute? I'm going to make you Gehazi this morning. Would that be all right? I'm going to give you a mantle. You don't need to do anything but stand there for a few moments, all right? Turn around and look at this beautiful crowd. <laughs> don't be afraid of them. You're, 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 you're the servant. You're here to serve. Say hello. Oh, wait till Daniel. All right. But you're not Daniel anymore. You're Gehazi. Would you like to be called Gehazi? All right. I don't know that I would either, but, but we're going to let you be Gehazi for a few moments. So here is Gehazi. He is the servant of the prophet Elisha. And so uh, just keep an eye uh, for illustration's sake this morning. And if you would look at him, you would find that uh, his story really begins very well. He's really the envy of all the other prophets because they would all love to have the position that he has as being the servant of the great prophet Elisha. He, he's the envy of his peers. And so uh, 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 Elisha chooses him, uh, uh, this great uh, uh, successor of Elijah, and, and he tells about how that he serves the man of God. Well, Elisha was there when, when Elijah was swept away in a whirlwind, and his mantle fell, and Elisha picked it up, and he had more of an anointing than even the prophet that was before him. He had a double portion. Uh, the mantle fell, and so so he says, I was there when Elisha, uh, when the Jordan waters was parted. I was there with Elisha. I saw it happen. And I, and I was there when, when Elisha took salt and he poured that cruise of salt into the bitter waters. And everyone laughed and scored it. But I was there. I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. And so Gehazi shares the story, uh, the, the, the joy that it brought. He said, I was there uh, when, when, when miraculous things happened, and it wasn't so nice. Uh, that, that when they were making fun of him, he called, and two bears come out of the woods and mauled them. I was there. I saw it. He said, I was there when the cruise of oil was that did not run dry. I, I, I was there. And, 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 and he shares the story of the grave by the campfires of the night and then the hush hours. But did he need you, Gehazi, to perform the miracles? No. He didn't need me. He didn't need me. But can I tell you there was a time when Elisha did need me? There was a time when he could not see, but I saw what the need was. And the sixth miracle that Elisha did was when the Shunammite woman had constrained us to stay in her home and she built on the home a room and he wanted to repay her. You know, Elisha couldn't see, but, but I saw. I saw that this woman who was wealthy, he thought, what can I do to repay her? What can I give to her? She was wealthy. She had everything. But I recognized something. I looked around her house. All you parents, listen up. Moms and dads, listen up. I looked around her house and there wasn't anything out of order. Sister Holly, there was no nicks in the wall. There was no dings in the refrigerator or stove, Sister Tiffany. Uh, there was no toy strung across the floor. Uh, everything was picture perfect. There was glass items sitting all over the place. There was things at lower levels, Sister Tina, that had 
some people wouldn't have out their house. Uh, uh, there was no stains on the carpet, uh, uh, but there was no sound of laughter. Uh, there was no joyousness. There was no legacy to be passed on. And as I looked around this home, I realized what that Shunammite woman did not have. She did not have a child. Elisha couldn't see it. So I said to Elisha, Elisha, I, I, I think that this woman, I, if I look at her, there's something that she needs. She needs a child. Elisha could see, but that, that's right, Gehazi. That's right, Gehazi. You're exactly right. I, I'm going to call her. Call the woman. And he calls the woman. And he says, this time next year, you're going to have a child. This woman was so proud to be part of the miracle that I was a part of, that I seen. But looking back, I realized that one day Elisha was up on Mount Carmel and he was praying. And I was with him, Brother David. And all of a sudden, we seen the Shunammite woman from a distance off. And as she approached, Elisha said, go to her and ask her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And he said, I ran to her and I asked her, is it well with thee? And she said, yes, it is. Confidently, it is well. Is it well with your husband? It is well. Is it well with the child? It is well. And so all of a sudden, uh, I noticed that when I asked her about the child, she was as strong as steel, but as fragile as porcelain. There was something different. And she looked past me, and she looked at Mount Carmel, and she saw uh, Elisha there, and she began to run to him, and she said, Elisha, and she fell at his feet, and she said, please help me. I thought I'd seen something that Elisha didn't see. But this time it was blinded from my eyes. I did not see the need. She began to tell Elisha that the child, the child, there was problems. Without even being distracted, Elisha said to me, grab this family, this is the best thing I can give you. Take my staff. And I want you to go to the boy's house. And I want you to lay it upon him. Put my staff on his face. He said, I went to the house. I climbed up the stairs. And, and, and I put the staff upon the child. Uh, but, but, but nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. So I resituated it. And I put it upon him again. And all of a sudden, and nothing happened. And And he went and he shut the door and he put me out. I, I didn't see it. I, I didn't know what the problem was. And when I saw the door shut in my face, I realized that I did not see what the man of God seen. I believe that in this moment something began to happen to Elisha. Can we see it there? To, to Hazar. Do you realize that we live in a world where there are opposing forces? Yeah. We want to fly like the eagle, but sometimes we wallow like the hippopotamus. And so here it was that Gehazi, he, he wanted to do something, Brother Josh, to help the boy. He did everything that Elisha told him to do. What, what did he miss? Do you know there are moments in our life where the devil wants to get in and he wants to discourage us? I mean, we live in a world where uh, uh, centrifugal uh, centric forces pull us back and, and, and there's a war against good and evil. Uh, why is it that we know that but we never allow that to cognitively touch our minds and get to the depth of our spirit? I mean, we entertain ourselves. The world does. Why do they have Superman and, and, and Batman and Robin? And why do they have uh, these movies that are Marvel movies? Because there's a war against good and evil. Uh, but it's more than the world entertaining themselves. But there is a reality that there is good versus is evil, that there's righteousness versus unrighteousness. God is at work, and God wants us to win, and God wants us to soar. Amen. But I see that 
Gehazi was struggling. You see, Paul said this. He said, I find then a law, not the law of Moses, but the law of sin and death. When I do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Lord after the inward man, but I see another law. Uh, 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 and my members warring against the law or the desire and the willpower of my mind. See, our life is full of choices. And oh, Sister Bella, how I wish the story of Gehazi would have been different. He was chosen, Brother Joshua, above all the other prophets, the young man, to be Sister Tina with Elisha. How could he choose to go down a road that was not good? We'll talk more about his choices in a moment. You see, every one of us are given the power of choice. And God wants our choices to be spiritual choices. And God wants our choices to be to soar in the sky. It's amazing how that when we look at birds, you know, think all the other birds, some of us are probably very familiar with chickens, and we know at night they go in and they roost, and, and uh, all the other birds. When a storm comes, what does all the other birds do uh, all around us? They go and they find themselves a place to roost. But there's one bird that is different, and that is the eagle. He said, I'm going to take this storm, and I'm going to let it take me to 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 feet higher. And I'm going to go above that which is hiding the sun. And so here it was, Gehazi. He could have found himself a place of prayer and said, God, I want to be used like Elisha. Uh, but, but all of a sudden, something began to get in his heart that, that, that he wasn't part of the miracles the way that Elisha was. You see, we've got to trust God when we're afraid. We've got to trust God when opposing forces come. We've got to worship and send a line. Uh, we, we have to choose that we will compliment and criticize. You see, we've got to choose the wings on the inside, not the hippopotamus that wants to roll around in the mud. I look at Hannah. We look at her in the Word of God and, 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 and Elkanah's uh, other wife. She came and she provoked Hannah. So what did Hannah do, Sister Tina? She chose to go to the temple and give her heart to God. And not, not, not go in a different way that was not good. Paul and Silas, what did they choose to do when they were in prison? They chose to sing. It's, it's really about choice. Well, let's get back to Gehazi. I'm sure that when this happened, he was humble. But I can tell you by his story that he began to grow angry. He began to grow greedy. And so one day the Bible says that here was Elisha and Gehazi, Brother Dennis, and there came a Syrian to them. And the Syrian came by the Bobby. He had leprosy. And he came to Elisha, and Elisha told him, he said, I want you to go down and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. That Syrian didn't like that idea. Wouldn't it be nice if the prophet would have just performed some type of ritual? He would have got better. But, but, but after a huff, we find that, that Naaman leaves and that his chariot returns. And when he, he returns, he returns a changed man because he followed what the prophet Elisha said. And Elisha, uh, he, uh, Naaman came to worship uh, the one true God. And he said, I, 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 I'm thankful for what God has done. Can I give you something? And he offers him a gift. But, but Elisha refuses it. This is where trouble begins to lurk. Are you listening to me? Yeah. This is where trouble begins to lurk. Gehazi has been faithful. He may have shared all the stories of what Elisha did. He may have been proud of the moment that he was able to reveal to Elisha uh, what, what the Shunammite woman needed. Uh, but, but he wasn't a part of raising that boy from the dead. He was locked out. The door was closed, Brother David. What are you going to do when things don't go your way? There is a war against good and evil in this world. There is a war against the righteousness that God wants you to have. And What are we going to do? Things aren't always going to go the way that we want them to. But it comes down to choice. That I'm going to choose by the power of God that's invested in me. 
Yes, there is a war. I want you to know that till the day that you die, you will war against the flesh. There will be temptation and there will be difficulty that will come into your life. But I want to tell you something, Gehazi. You've got to empower the Spirit in your life and in your will and in your desire. And it will be greater than the law of the man that, that was born into sin. You can rise above and make good choices. God wants you to soar in the sky. He doesn't want you to wallow in the mud. So here it is that Gehazi. He said, wait a second. I remember another time when Elisha couldn't see. He couldn't see. And so I had to tell him about, I had to tell him about her not having any children. I don't believe that Elisha can see this time either. We could use this money. We could use this clothing. So all of a sudden, Naaman dries off. And Gehazi goes running after him. Hey, 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 slow the chariot down. Naaman stops. Gehazi I said, wait a second. I, 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 I want I want that. My master has changed his mind. Would you give us one talent of silver or two garments? And then so I'll give you two talents of silver, not just one. And here's your garments. He leaves. Then he notices something. He notices something. He notices that his life has now changed. Naaman, who once had leprosy, now the leprosy has passed on to Gehazi. And the prophet tells him, you'll have leprosy and your sons will have leprosy. Because of the choices that you made. Do you think that God's plan was for Gehazi to have leprosy? I don't believe so. I believe that God wanted to elevate Gehazi. But because of the choices that he made, he wallowed in the mud instead of soaring in the sky. Once again, the Spirit of God wants to empower us and help us in the middle of life to rise above and to soar. And so uh, we find that, 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 that here it is that, 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 that Naaman comes a leper and, and, and Gehazi is a believer. But at, at the end of the chapter we read that, that Naaman is a believer but Gehazi is the leper. And so uh, how is it that Elisha uh, let the Syrian off so easy? How can he do that? Well, I think it's amazing. Because when we look, Sister Dietrich, at Elisha, he is a shadow or a type of grace or type of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Elisha is an Old Testament type of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And so when we look at Elisha, we find that Brother David, Elisha gives outrageous grace. Hallelujah! Do you hear me? Elisha gives outrageous grace. And it's a, it's a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives outrageous, unlimited grace. Amen. Grace. One day a woman was trapped in her sin, but Jesus gave her grace. And grace said Nicodemus free. Grace is so amazing and awesome. One day the story is told of a man who was with a, a, a peewee, a, a baseball league. And, and his players weren't so good, Brother Wally. In fact, they never won a game. They were terrible. And one day, uh, uh, during their game, uh, uh, the one who has never hit a ball got up to bat. And, 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 and he batted. And he hit the ball, Sister Dot. He hit it. And he did well. He scored first base. And so next up comes another good player. And they thought for sure they, they would win the game. And he hits the ball. And the boy who never hit the ball or caught the ball that's on first base, he reaches out and he catches the ball of his teammate. Oh. <laughs> Everyone sighs. Everyone moans. But all of a sudden... Amen. The coach gets up and he begins to cry for that young man on first base because he said he never hit a ball and he never caught a ball. And all of a sudden, in the stands, everyone is up cheering. Do you know what that is? That is ridiculous and amazing grace that is given. And I know that 
the same grace that you and I have experienced in our life. That God gives amazing grace. It's crazy and it's ridiculous and it's outrageous and sometimes it even feels dangerous. But God gives grace. You see, God desires to forgive. It's not His job to forgive, but He desires to forgive and He forgives us. And God wants us to give that same grace to others. And that's exactly what Elisha did. To me, He gave him grace. Back to his eyes. <laughs> See, we pick up what we read that Gehazi is being called to the king. And this is an amazing story because we here. We find that Gehazi has leprosy. We find that his sons have leprosy. And it's been some years since they have leprosy. And now they're on the outside looking in. How would you like to be the servant of God's mightiest, most ferocious man who's working in the day and hour that he's working. And then the next day find that you're on the outside of the city with your sons with leprosy. Separated. No longer have the opportunity to rise and to soar, but you're wallowing in the mud, you hippopotamus. See, God wants us to soar. It's interesting about the eagle. The eagle's an amazing bird. And I know I've told some of this before, but listen to me because it has a point. But the eagle in its life, as it begins to age, it finds that calcium deposits build up on its beaks. And its talons begin to get crusty and begin to, to just have extra skin and dryness to it. Its feathers begin to get ruffled and it becomes fat in its nature. Sister Tina, it's no longer able to soar the way that it once used to soar. And so it almost goes into this area of, of feeling like it's depressed. Like I've not been meant to be on the ground. I've been meant to be in the sky. And so there it is. And do you know that eagles made for life? And so its mate will come and it will have, have killed something and, and, and I'll bring it to its mate because they want their mate to do well and to live. However, an eagle will never ever eat what another eagle kills. So although it is there and it sees that food, it says to itself, wait a second, I have been destined to conquer and I have been destined to soar and to fly. So all of a sudden, it will begin to pick out its feathers and it will begin Begin to pull the, the things off of its talons and it will, it will break its beak and it will go down to the water and it will begin to wash itself off. And as it does, it will go back in, in the woods and it will begin to grow back new feathers, slim and sleek. Its talons will be renewed. Its beak will be renewed. And all of a sudden, there in the valley, you will hear noise upon noise upon noise because that eagle has been renewed. It says, I'm not the meant for the ground. I'm not I'm destined to be here. I'm destined for the skies. So there is a renewal. Here it is that all of a sudden that there is a renewal for Gehazi. He is called by the king. How in the world did I get called to the king's court? And here is a woman who uh, uh, God knows that he has raised her son from the dead and she flees because of famine, but she comes back home to find that everything's been taken. And as Gehazi is in the king's court, he begins to give witness that yes, this is the lady who Elisha raised her son. And the king said, I want everything restored to her. All the fruit that was taken from her land, I want it to be restored to her. You see, I find Gehazi getting grace right here in this situation. He was not destined to be in the mud and wallow around. But God created him to soar. He was able to see, Sister Tina, what no one else could see. That's what he wanted all along, isn't it? 
He wanted to see what no one else could see. And God gave him opportunity to be in that position. Brother and sister, I don't know where you're at this morning in your walk with God. Maybe somewhere uh, the evil has come in and fighting against your soul. It's not just on television. It's not just on Marvel. It's not just on Sunday morning, Saturday morning cartoons. It's a reality. Good versus evil. There's an enemy of your soul that's warring against your soul. And he'll try to get you from soaring the heights to wallowing in the mud. Maybe some of you feel like, I just can't soar anymore. I want to tell you something. He's out. God has a plan for you. And God wants to work in your life. God wants to give you grace. There are help for those who have fallen. Amen. There is renewal. See, we may have been made for the Lord, but we weren't created for the Lord. God created us to soar in heavenly heights. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano this morning, I love the story of Gehazi. And I don't think I've ever looked at it this way before. I'm glad that God has designed us to soar. I don't want you this morning to think of someone else. I want you to think about you and your situation. Have you ever felt like, God, when is my time going to come? I'm sure Gehazi felt that way. He was doing his best. But he was really in a very good position. Lots of people would have liked to have the position that he was in. But David, there were many prophets who would have loved to have been where Gehazi was. He didn't realize what God did. You know, there are a lot of people who want to be sitting in God's house where you are this morning. Sensing and feeling and experiencing what you're experiencing. Don't become jaded by situations in life. There's an enemy who wars against your soul and he would love to see you toward the heights and wallow like a hippopotamus in the mud. But God didn't create you to be hippopotamus. God created you to be an eagle. And he has borne you on his very own wings to teach you how to fly. So when life brings situations that obscure the sun, rise above those situations and soar in the sunlight. Understand that God gives grace, amazing, crazy, outrageous grace to others and to you. I believe that day that Gehazi experienced outrageous grace so that he could soar. Maybe you may say, Brother Seville, I've not seen, I've not experienced, I've not been where I'd like to be. Others seem to have been there, experienced that. I believe today is your day to see Gehazi. The King has called you into this course. And he wants to show you things that only you, only you, only you can give testimony. I believe that you come this morning because you come to seek God. So when you're seeking God this morning, would you allow him to be the one beneath your wings and raise you up? If you need to be renewed, know that he is the renewer. Those who wait upon him shall renew. Renew. Gehazi, God has a plan for you. Child of God, God wants you to see. This morning, would you spread your wings and fly? Would you gather in this morning? Everybody who wants to fly, amen. Would you gather in?